Hey everyone, I hope you had a wonderful last two weeks. I've noticed a lot of people seem to really like hex grids. So I've decided my first tutorial should be how to create a hex grid in Unity. There's going to be a little bit of math in this video. However, hexagons are mathematically really easy to work with and will make the process much simpler. Before we dive in, remember to comment, like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. I know you hear this a lot on YouTube, but it really helps us creators. The project will be available on my GitHub for free. A link for the repo can be found in the description below. I'm going to utilize an asset that I've talked about before on this channel, and that's Odin Inspector. When generating a grid, we need to store our hexes by rows and columns, so our ideal data structure is a two-dimensional list. Unfortunately, Unity can't serialize a 2D list by default, but Odin Inspector totally can. Not only do we need to serialize the list, but we need to save it across different instances of Unity. Again, Odin Inspector is going to help us here. Once you have Odin imported into your project, create an empty scene and go ahead and create an empty game object. Be sure to reset the game object's transform and give it a descriptive name. I'm just going to use hex spawner. I've gone ahead and created this hex mesh in Blender by using a six-sided cylinder. I've kept it one unit tall by one unit in diameter. This will allow us to easily resize the hexagon at any time. Create a material for the hexes as well. I'm going to use a basic white lit material. Now create another empty game object as a child of our hex spawner. As always, make sure the transform is reset and add a mesh filter and mesh renderer component to it. Assign the hex mesh to the mesh filter and the material to the mesh renderer. Now turn the hex into a prefab and delete it from the scene. With the prefab set up, let's get into coding. Create two scripts, hex spawner and hex grid. Open them up in your preferred IDE. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Hex grid is just going to store the settings for our grid. This doesn't need to be a whole class as it's strictly data and no logic. Just a serializable struct will work. The data that we'll need to store is the number of columns, rows, the radius, and the height. Finally, the apothem. This is where the math comes in. If the radius of a hexagon is from the center point to any of the corners, then the apothem is the distance from the center of the hexagon to the middle of an edge. If we draw a line to represent that, we can see that we create a right triangle. Using our good old friend the Pythagorean theorem, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We know the length of c, that's our radius. And here's where things get simple. The length of any given side on a hexagon is equal to the radius. So then we know that a is equal to half of the radius. Plug in our a and c values and simplify to solve for b. So that leaves us with this formula, the square root of the radius squared minus the half radius squared. So let's plug that formula into our code. Now with the hex grid script done, let's swap on over to the hex spawner script. Hex spawner is where Odin comes into play. Instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to use serialized mono behavior. This is a base class provided by Odin. The first thing we'll need is a reference to our hex prefab that we created. Next, we'll need the hex grid that we made. Finally, we need our data structure to store our spawned hexes. That's our two dimensional list of game objects. Be sure to mark it with the Odin serialize attribute as well, so that Odin knows to take control of serializing this. You can also mark it with the read only attribute, since we won't be dragging into this field in the inspector, but populating it via the script. Now on to spawning. Let's create a button that we can press any time to spawn or respawn the hexes. Odin again makes this really simple. Just add the button attribute above a spawn hexes method. Now, if we want to spawn a new set of hexes, say to change the grid size, we're going to need to clear all existing hexes if there are any. We can, of course, make that a button as well, so we can manually clear them at any time. Simply loop over all rows and columns, destroying each hex as we encounter it. Remember, if you press this button at edit time, you'll need to call destroy immediate rather than just destroy, so let's be sure to account for both cases. Finally, once we've finished destroying all of our hexes, reset the 2D list to empty. Back to our spawning code. 
simply loop over our rows and create a new list for the hexes to be stored in. Then loop over all columns in that row and instantiate a new hex prefab. Of course, we don't want these to spawn at 0, 0, 0, so let's pass in the position we want them to spawn at. Some more math incoming. The X position must account for the hex in the next row down to fit snug between any two in this row, so we need the radius times 3 times whichever column we're currently spawning. This will leave a gap between each hex. We also need to take into account that every row is moved over by one and a half hex radii, so we don't have overlapping hexes with the previous row. Let's call that the x offset for now and write a simple method to return either a zero for an odd row or the proper offset value for an even row in just a moment. For our y, let's just use zero for now. We'll come back to that later. Finally, our z value is how far down the hex should spawn. Simply use our row times the apothem that we saw for before. As for the rotation, we don't want to rotate the hexes at all, so quaternion.identity is all that we need. And let's be sure to child the hex to the hex spawner to keep things nice and tidy by simply passing the hex spawner's transform as the parent parameter. Onto that x offset. If you've never checked if something is even or odd before, we can do that with modulus division, which returns the remainder of a division operation. So if row mod 2 is equal to 0, we know that row is even. If it's anything else, then row is odd. Next, we need to adjust the size of our hex depending on the desired radius and height. So multiply the x and the z axes by the radius and the y by the height. Finally, add the new hex into our 2D list of hexes. Save, tab over into Unity. Fill out some values for our hex grid settings. Don't forget to drag the hex prefab into the hex spawner component and press the spawn hexes button that we created. It's kind of hard to tell these hexagons apart from each other, so let's randomize their y position a little bit. Head back into the hex grid script. We're going to use another feature of Odin, the min max slider. This will be our hex height variance. And to make things simpler to read, let's add some properties to access the min and max values of that slider, min being the x value and max being the y value. Back on our hex spawner script, let's change the y value in the position parameter to be a random value between the min and the max that we just created. Save, go back to Unity, and try dragging that min max slider around, or manually enter your desired values, and press spawn hexes. Now we can clearly see where each hex ends and the other starts. Play around with the values until you find something that you like. You could expand this in many ways, changing the shape that they spawn in, or using some Perlin noise to make it look like terrain. And that's it. It's simple, right? Special thanks to my patrons on Patreon. You two really make videos like this possible. If you would like to support the creation of more content and see your name on this list, as well as in my stream, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Stop by my live stream on Twitch Wednesday through Saturday, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific. Join my Discord community with many other talented and passionate developers. Check out my assets available on the Unity Asset Store. I recently released a super cool shader pack and I already updated it with a new shader. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to be notified of more content. Thanks for watching.